A beautiful evening to you and welcome to Super Screen News at 6, broadcasting to you live from our studios in Lagos, Southwest Nigeria. I am Blessed Amonese. Many thanks for joining us. President Mohamed Buhari says the national leader of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Bola Tunubu, will now lead the party's campaign for the February general elections. The president will disclose these while inaugurating the campaign council said is stepping down as a chairman because he doesn't want governance to so far as a result of elections. Tunubu and Vice President Shemil Shibanjo Uba regional plan were to deputize the president and our co-chairman of the council. And now ahead of the 2019 general election, the Independent Electoral Commission, INEC, says 84,004,084 registered voters will participate in the forthcoming 2019 general elections. Chairman of the Commission, Mahmoud Yakubo, who disclosed these at the regular quarter consultative meeting with political parties in Abuja, said the register will be an authentic register that will be made available at each polling unit nationwide. In fulfillment of this legal requirement, the Commission has made available to each political party a copy of the entire national register of voters. After the mandatory display of the register in all polling units nationwide for claims and objections from the 6th to the 12th of November 2018, the final register for the 2019 general elections stands at 84,4084 voters. Let me emphasize the Commission's policy that the smart card readers will be used for the 2019 general elections for the accreditation of voters. For clarity, I wish to stress that the function of the smart card reader during accreditation is to confirm, verify, and authenticate the voter. If the fingerprint is not authenticated by the card reader, but the PVC is confirmed as genuine, and the voter's personal details are consistent with the manual register, he or she shall be allowed to vote. No Nigerian will be disenfranchised simply because the card reader is unable to pick the biometrics. Yakuba, however, advised leaders of political parties across the country to start compiling lists of party agents for submission not less than 14 days to election, adding that it is in line with the timetable and schedule for activities for the 2019 general elections. Now, the presidential candidate of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, Jerry Ghana, has convened a stakeholder summit attended by some state chairmen and a candidate, contrary to the party's directive. Ghana, while speaking during the summit organized in Abuja, said states will be enabled to generate enough internal revenue instead of relying on the federal government for survival. The former Minister of Education Information also unveiled what he called the swift action plan that his government will follow if elected in the coming general elections. We are inspired and motivated by those ideals which place great emphasis. We as social democrats, we place great, great, great emphasis on the triumph of social justice. We don't want anybody to be oppressed. We don't want anybody to be suppressed. We don't want anybody to be sidelined. We don't want anybody to be taken as a living human being. Every Nigerian is a first class citizen. Yeah. 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 We place great emphasis on the dignity of the human person, the sanctity of human life the power of working together in solidarity, the excellence of good leadership, providing good governance. There is a powerful link between good leadership, good governance, and development. If you don't get your leadership correctly, you will never get development because the leader will be mediocre. Mediocre leaders will give you mediocre development. Professional leaders will give you professional development.
Director General Jerry Ghana Campaign Organization, E.K. Enil Aku, described Ghana as a man who understands the pain of Nigerians. It is not about Professor Jerry Ghana. It is about several other people who are running for election on this platform. <laughs> if we do not give the leadership, they will not be able to prosper in their elections. Leadership sometimes has to be taken when others are sleeping. Today we have a leader of the party in the person of the presidential candidate by the grace of God who has decided to show forth and to be the rallying point of those who want to win elections. It was attended by delegates from across 36 states and the federal capital territory. And still on electoral matters, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says 850,000 personnel, including ad hoc staff, will be trained for the 2019 general elections. Chairman, Board of Electoral Institute, Solomon Shoibi, will disclose these at the two-day training workshop. Said the training is another concerted effort by the Commission to ensure it adequately prepares for the 2019 general elections. Shoibi said at least one million personnel will be involved in the elections and all of them would undergo training between this week and next week, noting that the commission is determined to deliver free, fair and credible elections no matter what it takes come February 16, 2019. A former chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP in Lagos State, Mashud Salvador, says the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, will double the number of its votes it recorded in the 2015 elections. Speaking to Superscreen News at the launch of the Presidential Support Committee for Buhari and Ushibanjo 2019 in Lagos State, Salvador predicted victory for the APC candidate, President Mohamed Buhari, saying the, a the PDP candidate does not have the clout to defeat the incumbent. The report. The former Lagos State People's Democratic Party PDP chairman in Lagos State, who is now a chieftain of the All Progressives Congress, Moshud Salvador, says the Presidential Support Committee, under the auspices of the presidency, will mobilize massively for President Muhammad Buhari ahead of the 2019 presidential election slated for February this year. While he condemned the restructuring agenda of the PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar, he maintained that the election is a victory for his party. PDP restructuring is a scam, I can assure anybody. Even the presidential candidate of PDP knows very well that it's almost impossible for him to force his way to that issue of restructuring because of the type of restructuring they were thinking about. They refuse to go into what is necessary, what should be a priority. They are talking of political restructuring of which they don't even have the, uh, the power, the political power to do. How can somebody with less than 28 million, because the whole South, their, uh, their voters' capacity, as per the last reg uh, registration, that of the North, is over 40 million, and you actually know that restructuring is agenda of the, the South. Then, if you know that, you have to be realistic. This present government that has just spent less than four years, what has it been able to achieve? There are data which you don't have to, you know, further re-emphasize it. There are data. Then you compare to the last 16 years. Can you see the difference? You know, there are issues that are there. We are not saying everything is perfect. And that's why we are saying we are going next level to ensure the Nigerians have a better deal with this government. Moshud Salvador, who is now a chieftain of the All Progressives Congress in Lagos State, added that President Muhammad Buhari stands a better chance to be returned as president with the voting pattern in the northern part of the country, just as one of the directors of the group speaks about their convergence. Southwest has 14.2 million votes. Add Southwest and Northwest together. It gives you about 33 million. And Northwest is the Buari's uh, zone. And it has all, all the state there are APC state. Southwest 
is uh, APC state, is Volatinum Bush state, that will give you all the net needed votes you need. If you add all the four other zones together, they are no more than what you have in those two zones alone. More so, go to North East, that has about 12 million votes. Go there, you will realize that out of the six states there, you have five that are APC state. Then how is it possible for Atiku to, to get uh, over that one? It is a very difficult task for him. All he what is happening today a, is the effect of what has happened 16 years ago. So, and there's a government that came in and said, we can't continue that way. And within the last three and a half years, we have seen that the graph is taking a, a gradual growth. So do you want us to go back to the past 16 years where there was no NEPA, no light, no road, no railway? One thing you cannot take away from this government, we know how that our money is being stashed away in the country, outside the country. So one thing people are concerned is that leadership. By the time we have the right leadership, Everything will fall in place. It will be recalled that Moshud Salvador, as chairman of the Opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP in Lagos State, dumped the party along with 30 members of his conscience forum for the All Progressive Congress and later became the director general of Buhari or Shimbaju re-election group in Lagos. And now talking politics, a federal high court sitting in Port Harcourt today have nullified the direct and indirect primary elections allegedly conducted by two factions of the All Progressive Congress in River State. Delivering judgment, Justice Kola Wale Omotosho said both factions of the APC acted in disrespect of a pending suit before a Port High Court High Court. Justice Omotosho heard that the APC in River State could not produce candidates for governorship, national and state assembly polls while the matter was still pending. The justice also heard that it is illegal for candidates for the 2019 elections to emerge from the two primaries conducted by two factions. You will recall that an APC governorship aspirant, Magnus Abbey, and other party members had approached the court presided over by Justice Chuindu Wagu, challenging their alleged exclusion from the primaries. And in other news, the opposition political parties have resolved to begin a nationwide protest from January 15th to force President Mohamed Buhari to name a new Inspector General of Police. The parties on the platform of the Coalition of United Political Parties inched their decision on the claim that the current IG, Ibrahim Idris, ceased to be a policeman since January 3rd after 35 years in service. The coalition position was contained in a statement by its first national spokesman, Imu Ugo Chinyere. In Abuja, who said the position of the IG is currently vacant since Idris was deemed to have retired having served for 35 years, adding that the nation's constitution did not make provision for a former police officer to be an, AI, to be an IG. He claimed that by parading himself as the IG after January 3rd, Idris was committing a crime of impersonation describing the act as a threat to national security. The Nigerian army has explained why it evaded and shot down the operation of daily trust offices in Abuja and Maiduguri in Brono State. Defense spokesman John Agim, who made the disclosure, said the invasion isn't aimed at stifling press freedom, revealing that Daily Trust made a publication that revealed the plans of the military in fighting insurgency. Agim said it is completely unacceptable for any media house to have information about the military plan on the fight against insurgency and publish such plans. Noting that the intention was to invite them and let them understand the dangers that the action puts on the military. The defense spokesman also said the implication of such publication is what Boko Haram terrorists will be informed ahead of time, which allegedly shows that the Daily Trust is sympathetic to the insurgents. And now to Kano State, where the state's fire service says two children have died following an early morning fire outbreak at Sharada Jamin Yaman, Kano State Metropolis, today. The spokesman of the state fire service, Seydou Mohammed, who disclosed this to journalists, said the victims were four and seven year old. 
Mohammed said the fire service received a district call at about 2.09 a.m. in the morning from one Malambelu Tuku, but efforts made to retrieve the children were unsuccessful. The fire service spokesman also said investigation has commenced to determine the cause of the incident, advising residents to be more careful in using anything that could easily trigger fire in order to avert such a danger. Just to watch in Super Screen News at 6, we take our first break here and bring you more in business after this break. To stay with us. Glad to have you back here. You're watching Super Screen News at 6. And now to business news. The newly inaugurated international terminal at the Nnamdi Aziko International Airport, Abuja, has officially been opened for operations as A Sky Airlines began operations at the terminal on Sunday. A Sky Airlines B737 aircraft with flight number ETAVP which landed at the airport from Lome in Togo, had 91 persons on board, comprising 85 passengers and six crew members. Commenting on the median flight, the managing director, Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria fan, Saleh Dunuma, said the new terminal had been positioned to meet passengers' expectations. Dunuma also said that he expected other international airlines to move into the new terminal as soon as possible, saying it was a great departure from what was obtainable at the old terminal in terms of equipment and passenger facilitation. So talking business, the Manufacturers Association of Nigerian Man says it spent more on imported raw materials while reducing local sourcing in 2018. Man President Mansou Ahmed, who made the disclosure, said aggregate lo local sourcing of raw materials by the manufacturing sector dropped to about 57.87% in 2018 from 63.21% recorded in 2017. Data from the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, also shows that the volume of raw materials imported between January and November 2018 stood at 837.5 billion naira. The NBS report shows that 284.81 billion naira worth of raw materials were imported in the fourth quarter, while 261.10 billion naira in the second quarter and 291.87 billion naira in the third quarter of 2018. And that does it on business. There's more in foreign and sport news after this break to join us again. <laughs> 